Hello guys, welcome back to John's Workshop and in this video we're going to be doing another episode on the Flame Licker and the Mark engine build by Jan Ridders and as you can see on the board behind me in this episode we're going to be dealing with a valve plate assembly so a little bit about that, there's a, there's a mix of materials going on in there there's some sort of mild steel, some stainless, some mild steel plate and there's some silver soldering to do which is going to be quite interesting I've not silver soldered anything for oh, a good 25 probably year plus years I would think so and I've got no silver soldering gear here so well, I didn't have but I've now got a nice new toy that we're going to play with so we'll be using that for the silver soldering and I'm probably going to do as part of this and I'll film it and put it up separately uh, a bit of a review on the kit that I've bought for doing the silver soldering so that will be another video upcoming in the future and then I think finally interesting setup so one of the setups for the valve plate itself on the milling machine I'm going to sort of stray away from the conventional mill one side mill the other mill the ends mill the, mill the width and get it down to size that way and we're going to show a different way of attacking this that makes it much easier hopefully if it works so we'll be doing that it might be a tip for somebody so with all that said the only thing left on the board there is let's crack on so let's get on with it we'll join you in a minute at the command and control center have a quick look at the valve plate assembly and then we'll get straight to the milling machine and start making some swarf okay we're up at the screen so we've got the usual picture of the model up here 3d version so we just show the valve plate assembly so you can see the valve plate assembly here so we've basically got a mild steel plate at the back which is one millimeter thick I believe from memory we've got a stainless valve plate itself and that's the bit that does the sliding up and down the wedge shape on the cylinder to open and close the port and we've got some mild steel end pieces here that are silver soldered onto the plate we've got some pins to make that go through and silver solder all of this unit together and then we've got some brass bushes to go on the end to hold the spring steel springs so I don't know whether the springs will be part of this episode we'll see how we're doing for time if not we'll tackle those in a in another episode and uh, that will be something new as well never made springs before so that will be a venture into the unknown but yeah largely for this episode we're just going to focus on the bits that uh, make up this valve sliding assembly up here so I think that's the best view of it but just so you can see it kind of from a front view you can see the two different materials there light and dark and you can see it from a side view and see how as the springs come up you obviously apply more and more pressure to the valve plate as you seal the port off because of the wedge shape so that's the design and that's how it's how it works so without any further babbling we'll move to the milling machine and we'll get stuck right into the actual valve plate itself the stainless piece that, that closes the port off Right, I've touched off on the front, the side and the top. I've set my DRO up. I've marked the top of my vise with my Y and X dimensions. They're the same both ways because I've set my DRO bang centre of the stock. So I now just need to keep profiling around the outside of this until I hit these numbers and that will be my finished size. First job though is to just deck the top off. So we're going to do that first.
that's within a couple of thou or round of where I need it to be. Not the best finish in the world, but this needs to be lapped anyway. So this is going to need a bit of after after machining work just to lap the face. So not too concerned about the finish, but Dimensi, that's okay. So that's got that's got us blocked out finish sizes all round. So next setup now we're going to take it out the vise, hold it flat, and we're going to drill the two holes in for the two pins. So I'll bring you back when we're doing that. Right, well, we've blued our plate up, so we've got it back in the vise on some parallels. We've blued our surface up, marked it out, and I've just used my wobble bar with the pointer in to set my DRO around the two hole centers so I now know I'm set up that's perfectly good enough for this So we've just blasted that off with our hacksaw off the stock and what we're going to do now is just finish it to finish thickness this way. The problem I've got is this is 3mm thick, all of my parallels are 4mm thick. So what we're going to do is stand it on a parallel like that and we're going to use another parallel that's flush with the top of the vise. So we know it's not gripping on the other parallel, we know it's gripping on the part. We'll just make sure that's nice and square as we tighten the vise up. ideal but I think that'll be fine so we'll get our end mill back in and we'll come in and just finish this to final thickness there we go guys quick rub with a bit of wet and dry on the valve seat face and I've got a a nice flat well finished off surface for sealing off the port on the cylinder so I'm glad I've drilled two holes in it because it would be quite easy to get that confused with the slip gauge I think if it was kicking around for a bit so anyway that's done we'll move on to the backing plate now that sits behind this that's going to get silver soldered onto it so we're on to the next part now which is the backing plate that goes behind the valve plate so this is a piece of one mil thick mild steel plate and that's what it calls for on the drawing so what we've done is blued that up we've cut it out with a pair of tin snips with leaving some plus metal on the line and we're just going to draw file this up now down to the line to get that to our finished dimension so you don't need to watch all of that because that's going to take a while but you get the idea we're just going to sit the file on top of the top of the piece of steel and basically we're just going to bring this down to our line in that manner just using a draw filing technique so take five five minutes or something to get that blocked out we'll deburr it around the edges take the blue off and then we've got a couple of holes to drill it and that's that's it for this piece so I'll bring you back when we're putting the holes in right we've got our piece filed to the right sizes 
we've marked out two holes and we're just going to, we've centre pop those and we're just going to drill through two and a half millimetres. Right, so we're on with the trunnions. I've got a piece of unknownium here. It's got some rust on it, so it's steel of some sort, carbon steel of some sort. Don't know what it is yet. And we're going to turn the first trunnion out of this bit of bar. Not quite sure on the method yet. We'll make that up as we go along. But first thing I need to do is face it off and get my length for the first trunnion down to 6mm, which is the size of the flange that's in the middle. So we'll do that now. So that's our first side done. We now need to replicate this smaller diameter on the other side of the flange. So I'm going to get a parting tool set up now. We're going to plunge in three or four plunges and then we're going to hopefully finish the second side with the parting tool all in one setup and then we'll just part it off when it's done.
and now all we've got to do is find it. Right guys, I've got one of my trunnions in the vise and what we need to do now is put a 1mm slot all the way down this 3mm spigot and I've got no real way of machining that with the kit that I've got in the shop and even if I did this would be quite a tricky little operation so we're going to go for the good old hacksaw and I'm afraid for the first few minutes of this all you're going to see is my fingers and thumbs <laughs> just because of the size of it so we're using a full size hacksaw which is the right thickness of blade and what we're going to do is eyesight the center which I'm doing there and I'm using my thumbnail as a guide for the hacksaw blade and the first few cuts need to be preferably in the steel John and not in your thumb because that will be much better need to be running backwards so what you can't do is start this trying to use the hacksaw blade forwards as it's meant to be used so a few slices with that check your center I'm a little bit to the left so I'm going to move over a tiny bit it helps if you've got long nails when you start this operation because you'll have short ones when you're finished looking good so we've got our slot so now it's a case of I'm trying to get my arms and hands out of the way which is going to make this even more difficult it's a case of eyesighting down the blade letting the saw do the work I'm not putting any Additional pressure on here, really. This is a good test of your eyesight. <laughs> Looking good. So for those of you that thought the parts on this engine weren't going to get any smaller, we were both wrong. So I've just turned these up. These are, actually they're a bit bigger than the pins I suppose that I've just made, but these are 6mm OD, 3mm ID and 2mm wide. Two off. And what I now need to do is put a 1mm hole through on center line into the bore so I've got them sat on a 4mm parallel which means there's every possibility the vise is going to clamp on the parallel before it clamps on the parts not that I need a lot of clamping force to put a 1mm hole in so what I'm going to do is I'm just using a piece of wet and dry off the bench here and I'm just going to slide that down in front of the part slightly nip it and I'm just eyesighting these together that looks pretty good just give that a bit of a nip and tear the rest of that off so it's not getting tangled in the drill and they're not going anywhere so we'll get set up now get the drill chuck in the mill spindle and we'll get ready to put two one millimeter holes through those two big stuff
oh dear me. Well, I've got one of them back. Right, I've retrieved the escapee. I don't think you're even going to be able to see these, but I can't even hold them. I can't even hold them to show you where the hole is. Is that showing? Hopefully that's showing. So we've got a one millimeter hole through there, through the wall. So there, both to drawing. That's it for those bits. I'm just going to deburr those with my big countersink and then we'll move to the bench and start putting all this lot together. Right guys, we've got our assembly, everything's built up. We've got it on some proper fire bricks now and we're going to use our new toy which is our oxypropane or oxygas turbo 200 kit and I'm going to put a separate video up that is a bit of a review on that not a full review but a bit of a review and so we're going to have a crack uh, a bit of sil silver soldering even as I say it's been a long time since I've done any of that so back on a learning curve with this we'll see how we get on not quite sure which gas nozzles I need to use but we'll give it a go with the medium one this is quite thin stuff so should be okay with that and we'll see how we get on Well, there we go guys that's the end of this episode making the valve assembly hopefully the lights are going to stop on long enough to allow me to film this <laughs> this little bit so we've just had 24 hour blackout while storm I forget what it was called begins with an A but it's gone has just been through it's been pretty wild here if I'm honest um, we've lost some bits of the roof we've lost some bits of 
sort of um, vents and things like that on the soffits. We've trees that have come over that there's yeah it's quite a mess and I've not been able to get in here today obviously for obvious reasons so we've just got the lights back on now so this will be hopefully if I can well, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to get this up tonight for tomorrow morning Sunday as usual but uh, we may not make that so we'll see how we get on anyway long story short so that is our valve assembly complete and I know you won't be able to see it from that distance but I'll just try and bring it up a bit closer to the camera. <clears throat> so what we've done is we've chemically blacked that and then we've just cleaned up the stainless plate again and the reason I've chemically blacked all the mild steel bits is because they're going to get black anyway based on being next to the port on the cylinder where the gases are coming in and out so all the mild steel bits have had a, a chemical black on them We've, we've given it a clean up post silver soldering so that's quite I think the most fiddly part of the whole engine build done so there's quite a bit of work gone into that but it doesn't look it when you when you look at it but lots of small bits so pleased with that so that's another bit of the engine complete I'll just get back on my perch there we go right so Thank you all very much for watching and thank you for your support, the subscribers and the new subscribers that are coming along. I uh, hope you've enjoyed that. Something a little bit different. Need to do a bit more playing around with the oxypropane kit until I get a bit more used to it. And that's, that's going to be a useful addition to the shop. And as I said, there'll be a video coming out showing me assembling that, putting it together. And we, we tried out a couple of the different sort of nozzles on the end just to see what that's like so I might put that up in a couple of weeks or something just as a bit of interest in case anybody else wants one of those so well, I think we'll call it a wrap at that so thank you all very much for watching and we will catch you all very soon on another video when we'll be making something else